All right, all right. Red River Scramble 2020. There's a pandemic. Everything's falling apart. And uh, yet, this year of all years, I might actually uh, make it to the Red River Scramble. Yeah, so, um, I think last update, I was taking the bike to the shop. Uh, these people making lefts just make me so nervous. Uh, I was taking the bike to the shop. I did that. I got the front suspension worked on. You know, I think it fixed some of the, the issues I was having on the, on the high-speed wobble front. Um, it feels a lot better until you get, like, real fast. But I think over, like, 75, I'm sort of cracking it up to the TKC 80s. Uh, you know, they've never been super, super stable tires at that kind of speed. And that's just, that's not what they're built for. So anyways, uh, I went and took the bike back in last week to get the uh, front brake blood. It was feeling real squish. And uh, here I am, back on the Scrambler. First long distance trip. Uh, yeah, I don't know, since I lived in Colorado, honestly. It has been a while. By my math, um, it was that snow, snowy day on Monarch Pass. Um, which I think is about four years ago. Uh, there's a there's a video of that. And uh, like every good motorcycle trip, you know, this wouldn't be appropriate or start correctly if it didn't start with a rainy day where the ground is moist. And it was actually, it was raining pretty good this morning. So it's like 100% humidity. And it's that, it's that like level of wetness where you need your rain gear to keep you dry but the rain gear just soaks you in sweat because it's hot and humid. Um, and I mean, I guess when I say hot, like relatively speaking, it actually feels pretty good out here today. I think we've got a day ooh, uh, somewhere in the like, somewhere in the like mid seventies. So all things considered, it's not too bad. Could be a lot worse. But the first day of fall was this week, so, you know, bound to have some good good temperatures. It's going to drop. Man, I haven't been on a trip in so long. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a slog today. Five and a half hours. I'll just round that up to six. It's 5.38. Six hours. It's, uh, it's basically 11 o'clock. It says I'm going to be there at 4.30 probably push that back to 5.30 or 6 with some of the stoppage. They're talking to me. And, um, some of the stoppage. And honestly, I just, I haven't, I haven't done one of these long highway trips in a long time. I haven't done any off-roading in a long time. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of dread and anxiety today. Um, I have a lot of excitement as well, you know? Um, it's just good to be back on the Scrambler. I feel super committed uh, to like getting there. It's like once you just like decide you're gonna make it, you know, it's like some of the, some of the worry goes away. But um, I still have to survive the rain, the, the moist ground, the, the TKC 80s at highway speeds and uh, the uh, Metro Atlanta drivers plus a full day of just brutal interstate slogging. So this is going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. You know, getting back getting back at it. But uh, I've got my Cena hooked up with music. I got you guys here on the GoPro to keep me entertained and I have the promise of a glorious weekend of camping and good fellowship ahead of me. So that'll keep my my spirits high. Um, I'm going to meet up with Chris. I think this will be the first time Chris and I have ridden together. Uh, you guys know him as Scrambler Stories. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that car up ahead, but he swerved way over to get off. I've just seen a lot of that kind of stuff lately. The, the pandemic is like really enabled 
the bad drivers to behave even worse because there's been less cars on the road and then whoever was in the, the middle of that bell curve they're just getting back on the road so they're like relearning how to deal with things and uh, I don't know Atlanta is just one of the worst cities for just crazy driving people um, but anyways yeah so scrambler stories Chris we're, we're gonna meet up and ride I think this is the first time we've ever ridden together we actually met through YouTube um, and I know we hung out once at uh, the Barber Vintage Festival. I'm trying to think. Oh, great. I'm trying to think if that's the only time we've met in person, but we've developed pretty good friendship <laughs> via text message and phone. So uh, that's going to be exciting. Yeah, looking forward to getting to hang out with Chris a little bit more, do some good riding with him. Man, this weather is just not looking, it's not looking promising. Well, uh, anyways, this is the uh, this is the slog to the Red River Scramble. This is the long day on the highway with my bike. Haven't ridden these kind of miles in a minute. It's gonna be real, real interesting. Okay, cool. I've just about arrived. My phone is saying I've got 21 minutes. What a slog on the interstate today. Um, raining, lots of traffic. The rain just never really let up. It was like it would mist and then it would rain and then it would mist. It was slick the whole time. And um, I was a little surprised at how cold it has been. This is uh, the first I've been back into my, you know, summer slash all season, I guess really just summer gloves. I had my Gore-Tex winter gloves on most of the ride because um, it's just been so cold. This is the, the sunniest and clearest that it's been. And even this is like, you know, hoodie and sip on a coffee weather right now. So, oh man. What a, what a great opportunity to just get back on the bike and get back into the swing of things. The bike was just riding kind of like a pig in the, the first two hours. I stopped and got gas and I adjusted the suspension. I softened up the, the rebound damping and the compression damping. And man, that has helped a ton. It feels so much better at speed with the um, both the, the compression and rebound just softened up a little bit. And I didn't even soften it that much. Just a couple of clicks. Well, I realized I forgot a bunch of stuff. Which is like, just seems like it's bound to happen on these trips, you know. I uh, left my instant coffee behind, even though I've got all my stuff for, for cooking and making coffee. Uh, I left my spork behind. I seem to never remember to bring that thing. So frustrating. Let's see what else. I left my uh, I left my camp pillow behind, which is fine. Usually just throw my jacket and the air hawk uh, under my head. And that works. It's kind of a makeshift pillow. As you can tell, I've forgotten my pillow on plenty of camping trips. Um, ooh, look at this little bridge. So interesting. Uh, what else did I forget? I don't know, there's some more stuff, but it's not, not coming to me at the moment. What is going on here? Uh, okay. Oh, that's just continuing of the road. Interesting. <laughs> These roads. Oh, uh, the off-roading is tomorrow. I don't know what we're gonna ride, but I know it's gonna be really fun and really awesome. And uh, I guess all I really care about is not breaking down. I Breaking down is, is not the right way to say it. I, I, I don't wanna like crash and hurt myself or do such damage to the bike that I cannot ride it home. 
put it that way. <laughs> it's like a six and a half hours to get here. It took me like eight maybe. Uh, maybe even eight and a half, but I stopped. I had to take a work meeting. Spent 30 minutes at the Waffle House taking, taking a phone call, another 15, eating some food. And, I, and I'd stop at the gas station every 70 miles just to stretch my legs. Now we are almost there. We are almost there. So close. Oh, look at this road. God damn. So good. man good spot oh. I thought it was gonna be way further okay. like just from the registration to here I it. oh you did <laughs> yeah 